the gospel text of today is taken from the gospel of Mark chapter 5 verses 1 to 20 and contains the story of what is known as the healing of the Gerasene demoniac. The reason why this miracle is given this name is because Jesus is in the area of the Gerasenes, which is very clearly Gentile territory. And the reason why it can be identified as Gentile territory is because of the presence of pigs. Gentiles would rear pigs. Jews would never rear pigs and so therefore Jesus is in Gentile territory. It is also very clearly an indication that even though Jesus is aware that he was sent primarily to his own people first, he is also sent to the whole world. And that is why Already within the gospel, Jesus comes into Gentile territory. As soon as he steps out of the boat, when he enters the area of the Gerasenes, a demoniac comes to meet him. The person is possessed. No one was able to restrain this demoniac who had supernatural powers and who became very strong. Even those who attempted to tie the man or bind him could not do so because the man would break the chains and tear the fetters. So he was a man who could not be restrained. However, this unrestrained demoniac, the moment he sees Jesus, recognizes that he has met his maker. And that is why he responds by identifying Jesus or trying to say who Jesus is in an attempt to control Jesus. He uses the name for Jesus as the Holy One of God in the attempt that Jesus will be controlled. However, Jesus can be controlled by no demon. Jesus can be controlled by no situation. Jesus can be controlled by nothing. And that is why when Jesus asked the demoniac the name, the demoniac will avoid giving the name and says instead his name is Legion. The word legion means many and on the surface level it means that there were many demons who possessed this man but on the deeper level it also means that the demoniac would refuse to give his proper name in an attempt not to be controlled by Jesus. However, even if the demoniac will not state his name, Jesus can control the demoniac and is able to heal the man. And the man is healed completely with just a command of Jesus. The man who got rid of the demons is now sitting fully clothed in his right mind as normal as any other person. And the townspeople hear of the miracle and they come rushing to the place where the demoniac, the former demoniac used to be and they are stunned because they see that all the demons have been exorcised from the man and he is sitting there clothed and in his right mind. However, even though they are amazed, even though they are stunned, they cannot accept this miracle because they are frightened of the power of Jesus. And that is why even though they are grateful to Jesus for healing this demoniac, they would prefer that Jesus moves away from their territory because they are unable to explain, to understand, to fathom how Jesus could have exorcised the demon from this man and so therefore begin to wonder what kind of power that Jesus might possess. The demoniac, however, or the healed demoniac, knows exactly what has happened and he asks Jesus to become a disciple. Jesus 
accepts his request but in a different way when he tells the person to become instead an apostle and sends him out to proclaim the same message of salvation which he experienced and to rid people of their own demoniac possessions. Today, modern science would speak about possession as hallucinations, would speak about possessions in a psychological manner to indicate that the person who is seemingly possessed might have some hallucinations or psychological problems. And while that might be true in many cases, it is also true that we must not focus merely on the external demons that possess us today, but the demons which are within our hearts which might possess each one of us. These are demons of self-centeredness, demons of selfishness, Demons of only looking at my own needs. Demons of not being concerned about the needs of others. Demons of living a life that is self-sufficient without being aware of the millions in my situation, in my place, in my country, in my world, who do not have even the basics. When I live a selfish life, then I let the demon of selfishness possess me. When I live a life of unforgiveness, I let the demon of unforgiveness possess me. When I live a life that is negative, I let the demon of the negative possess me. Will I pray to the Lord? Will I ask the Lord to exercise from my life these demons that possess me today?